I'm all over the map in terms of makeup doneness this week. I have gone no makeup at all, full makeup, and now half makeup. Also, I'm here on a Friday. Surprise! Yep, people were trying something new, so let's get into this. Hello everyone! I'm here with you guys on a Friday because I'm going to be starting up a new series for the springtime where I'm testing out new products and doing a first impression, so first impression Friday. I'm sure this is done before, but first time for me on my channel. And so I'm going to be testing out new brands, new products, new launches, things that are coming up that I really want to sit down and talk with you guys about and share my first impression of. I think first impressions are one of my favorite type of videos to film. I love doing them. They're so much fun. I enjoy experimenting with new makeup and sometimes, sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. But either way, it is very entertaining, at least for me. So hopefully you guys like this, and if you do, give it a big thumbs up if you wanna see more of these First Impression Friday-esque videos. And if you have any requests for brands or products, new launches, things like that, that you guys wanna see for the next First Impression Friday, leave them in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every Tuesday and Thursday, and now Friday, at least for the springtime. And without further ado, Let's get into this. I feel like every time I do that, I just, I get more ominous in the way I say it. Let's get into this. Rachel, we need to calm down a little bit. So since I didn't tell you what the product was, I got too excited about the fact that I'm doing a new series of videos. Let's get into that first, shall we? So today I'm gonna to be testing out a new foundation. This is the Natasha Denona Foundation X Full Coverage Foundation. And this just launched, I believe, on the Sephora website. I have seen nothing but incredible things from other people talking about Natasha Denona products but I haven't seen anything on the foundation yet. So I thought this would be a good starting point because I've never tried any of the Natasha Denona products, but I've heard incredible things about their eyeshadow palettes in particular. It's just like, some of them are like, $260 Canadian. I'm like, maybe we'll start with the, you know, $60 foundation, which is still a lot. So interestingly enough, when I was looking at the packaging of it, I was looking for some information on what the product is about, other than that obviously it is a full coverage foundation. And there isn't anything, which is rare for products to not have any sort of information on what the product is about, what makes it special and different than other brands. So I thought, I think that's pretty interesting. It does say it has a fruit complex in it, but doesn't provide any other information. So maybe like a fruit salad? I don't know. Got grapefruit and citrus. All right, that's a little bit of a one-sided fruit salad, but I'll take it. This comes in 11 different shades. It retails for $58 Canadian. And uh, let's, let's read the website for more details because apparently you can't put that on the package. There's like a full blank side on both sides. Just saying. It is a long-lasting, full-coverage, radiant foundation that doesn't settle into fine lines, leaves the skin with a naturally radiant, flawless finish. I like all of the key words that they used in there. That's, that's all I'm, that's what I'm looking for. It is supposed to never look thick, dry, or cakey on the skin. These are all great things. I'm wondering if it's going to stand up to one of my all-time favorites, which is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation I talked about in my March favorites, which was yesterday's video, so check that out if you're interested. But that is one of my all-time favorite full coverage foundations. It does the job, it stays put all day long, so we're gonna test that out. We're gonna put this on, put it to the full test, and we'll see how this wears. So I got two different shades because I'm more on the pale side, and so I assume that most brands don't know what pale is and so I just assume it's probably the lightest shade and the second lightest shade and I'm probably a mix of the two. Um, so I ended up getting 10 which is a neutral fair suitable for all undertones as well as 20 which is a light beige yellow undertone. So because I went a little bit heavy on the on the self tanner this week we're gonna go with 20 and, and hope for the best. So that is the shade on my hand which actually is probably Probably a good match. It's a little bit on the light side. A little bit light, but probably would be good if I had a lot less self tanner on. Oh my goodness. Not a bad match. Not a bad match at all. And for those of you that are on the paler side, I will show you what the palest one looks like in case you are interested and this ends up being a really good foundation. That is the shade. I will just blend that out for you. Whoa, that is a lot less thick than I was anticipating. Oh my gosh, it's everywhere. But that, that is the shade. So it's pretty light, okay? Natasha to Denona, you know what light is. That's excellent. Props to you. So in just playing around with it and blending it on the hand, it blends out very nicely. Um, it is very full coverage, but it does not feel like full coverage. So I'm excited to test this out on the skin. Like, look at that. That, that is my hand. That is before, that is after. In terms of the packaging, it is made of glass and then this part is a nice plastic pump. So in order to test this fully, what I have done is I have used a primer on half of my face and nothing on the other half other than moisturizer. So I use the um, 
Becca First Light priming filter on this half of my face and I have put nothing on this half. I also wanted to test out different application techniques using a brush, using a sponge, and just see if there is any sort of a difference other than obviously the sponge is going to lighten up the foundation significantly in terms of coverage. So we'll see what that looks like as well. I just want to kind of play around with it and see how it looks best and see how it wears throughout the day. So I'm going to be using the um, Optical Blurring Brush. This is by Urban Decay um, first, and I'm going to do it on both sides of the face, and then I'm going to test out as well the, um, just like a sponge. I think this is the L'Oreal blending sponge, so we will be testing this out as well just to see if that makes any sort of a difference and see which one I like best. So the first thing they say to do is to shake up the product a lot. So I'm sure, well I, they didn't say a lot, but I'm going to shake it up a lot. Make sure it is good and blended. Okay, right, so that is one pump right there. So that's a, a good amount of foundation. Sometimes when you pump out some of the foundation in other brands, um, you get like this tiny little amount of foundation. You're like, that's going to do nothing. So that's good. That's, that's, a, that's a good sized amount for a full coverage foundation, I feel. So we'll see how far this amount actually goes. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to dot it onto the face like so and I'm going to start blending okay that didn't that didn't seem to do anything I'm gonna put some more on this is one of the you don't have to worry about putting a lot on type of foundations so this is one coat just sort of like on this area of my face versus nothing at all and I have used uh, about half of the amount that I pumped out on my hand and I'm gonna say like I'm, I'm it's fine I guess I don't know it's it feels like a thick cream on my hand but when I blend it out on the skin it kind of blends out a lot thinner which is nice I like that it feel it doesn't feel like I have thick amounts of foundation on my skin it's not giving me the most like flawless look um, I can still see like some of the little um, discolorations and things I have on my cheek when I'm like looking really up close and it also seems to be like a little bit patchy like it's not seeming to like blend into like right here for example I don't know we're gonna we're gonna keep going though I'm gonna try the sponge a little bit um, just back here I just want to see which one I want to continue using and see if one looks better than the other so Let's do this. I like applying it a lot better with a sponge than with a brush. I feel like it gives it a much more airbrushed look and the foundation seems to go a lot further, which is interesting because I, I would have thought that it would have gone further with a brush, not with a sponge, but all right. It is not sopping wet. I did squeeze out a lot of the water because I wanted to maintain the integrity of the foundation. I want it to still feel and look like a full, I don't want it to look like a full coverage foundation. I, well, wait, hold on. I want it to be full coverage, but not cakey. So um, I did make this fit, like there's not a lot of water in here. Um, and I'm just pressing very, very lightly onto the skin. And so I'm going to continue to apply it and we'll see how it applies to the area of my face that has no primer on it. We'll go with stripes this time, the dots on the other side. Okay, now that I've blended it all over my face, like it looks almost patchy up close like it's adhered to parts of my skin but not fully I don't know I'm gonna try and zoom in so you guys can see it you can see my pores so much in this area oh my goodness you can still see a lot of my marks and stuff on my skin through the foundation and the foundation looks really heavy on the skin like you can see it all like broken up on my forehead oh no this is not good. Let's see if they have like a video. Maybe I'm applying it wrong. All right, here we go. Sephora has a little video on how to apply the product. Okay, let's go ahead. Whoa, they use a lot more product than I did. Oh no. Oh, but it looks like all of those things. It's dry, thick, and cakey. Oh no, I have to stop this video. No, no thank you please. Well, I wish I had watched that video before I bought this foundation. Well, they seem to be using just a kabuki brush to apply it to the skin and sort of like put it on the skin and sort of like drag it in sort of like that in longer strokes. I don't know, maybe I'll try that. Oh my gosh, this is awful guys. Oh my gosh, it's just not settling onto my skin properly. It's breaking up all over my forehead. Let's see what happens when we apply more of it. Maybe it all evens out and it looks amazing. And <laughs> now, now this, oh, there we go. The pump started to not work and I was like, great. because there's only so much I can take from one foundation. All right, let's try this again. Doo, doo, doo. Make it super duper full coverage. Like, 
I don't have skin full coverage. It's like cakey and streaky and it's not blending out well. So this is what it looks like with two full coats on my skin. And I can see little streak marks from this brush and this brush works well. I've used this with multiple different types of foundations and this is a good brush. And so there are little like um, brush marks on my skin. You can see it clumping up in some areas and not in others regardless if I have primer on my skin or not. But in the spirit of a full first impression, I will set it with powder. I will put on like my concealers and everything. We will reassess. But yeah, first impression as is, mm mm not great everyone. All right guys, I have finished all my makeup. Um, it's still not looking as optimal as I would like it to look. It is a little bit patchy. It is not covering any of the spider veins that I have on the side of my face as much as I would expect it to considering it's a full coverage foundation. I didn't apply any concealer just to that area just under my eyes. But I will be trying out their eyeshadow palettes because I've heard such incredible things about them that they are so ridiculously pigmented and buttery and smooth and easy to blend out and gorgeous gorgeous shades. So I will be definitely trying that out. Foundation though, I would not recommend myself personally. I think it just didn't work out as well as some of the other foundations that I've tried. Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick little update for you um, at the end of the day and uh, I kept the foundation on and you know what? The, f um, the powder that I used saved this particular foundation. I still, it's not my favorite full coverage. I think there are better ones out there, but it did last all day. The powder I used is the um, Makeup Forever one, uh, the HD high definition powder stuff. Um, so I used that and it made a big difference in how this foundation set and like looked on the skin. But just in the first impression in the application, the fact that it kind of sank into my pores and made them look really obvious, the fact that it was patchy just wasn't doing it for me. It's still not my favorite, but it is not as bad as I initially had thought um, once I kind of got out of my studio lights and went to natural light, it did look a lot better. So just wanted to throw those two cents in there. But yeah, that, what a way to start a first impression Friday. Hopefully my future ones are more successful. That is everything for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this, give it a big thumbs up and let me know what products you guys want to see next for the next first impression Friday. I love hearing from you guys. I hope you guys had an amazing, amazing week and I will see you guys all on Tuesday. Love you girls. Mwah.